Welcome to an interview with Professor Ian Stewart. Last year I was fortunate to go on a geology field trip to Sicily with Plymouth University and see the beautiful sites of Mount Volcano and Mount Etna, as well as the chance to interview Ian Stewart. Professor Ian Stewart, commonly referred to as a TV geologist for presenting BBC shows such as The Rise of Continents and How Earth Made Us, is the director of Sustainable Earth Institute at Plymouth University. Throughout my student years he taught me a lot about structural geology. So go and get a nice strong brew, sit back, relax and enjoy the interview. Um, I don't know, I never ever had a, like a, a fossil collection or a mineral collection. I was never into rocks really. But when I did um, geography at school, um, 1980, May 1980, mountains and hills blew up. And that was pretty cool. Across the news that summer was this volcano spewing out in, in um, northwest USA. And I just, that, I thought it was amazing. So I did a, remember doing a project on volcanoes. And uh, I think that was it really, they really like volcanoes and earthquakes. And I, I like the idea of the planet and, I don't know, I thought, I thought you could actually be like an explorer or an adventurer, I thought that was a job. Um, so that, I think that's what drew me in was just the idea of travel. You know, this is, there's Mount Etna up there, this is Tower Mina. It's, it, I first came here in 92 or something like that when there was an eruption going on and, uh, on the Etna. And, you know, after that, you just get the kind of bug, and there's loads of places in the world like that where you can go and see amazing things happen. And then just, then after a while, you just want to tell people about it, really. Sicily trip. You mean this trip? Yeah, this yeah. particular one? Yeah. I think, um, what, I mean, one of the things I like about this trip is it starts down at the coast, and you see the, you know, the, the old, you know, the really early Etna and the kind of early stages. And it's really nice at the, the beach. It's a kind of lovely environment. And then you kind of build up and you, you finish up at the summit. So that's good, that, that whole the geography of the trip, really. Um, I think we never saw it kicking off, did we? That was, that's the only thing. You really, I don't know anyone who studies volcanoes who... We saw a few puffs of that. We saw some puffs, yeah. <laughs> and so that almost so more was worse because you kind of thought you can really do it. I thought the day we went to INGV uh, in Catania, which is the observatory place, and they were really telling us things are starting to happen, the volcano is kind of moving into a different phase. Um, that was interesting. Um, so it's just an eruption you want? From the <laughs> that makes it sound you're... so superficial, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I'm really sad. I don't. I don't do much. I don't know. I'm always jealous of these people who, like Tony, plays the mandolin, and other people have got some skill. You know, Matthew plays. You know, in a, I've got orchestra. They've got skills. I've got none. I spend all my time being a dad and a nerd in probably the reverse order. So you have a little rock collection. Do you? Like, <laughs> that, that kind of well, I kind of have now. We've I mean, collected stuff. They're in the back garden, though. They're not afraid of place, so they're <laughs> littered around the place, but. No, I kind of feel, I started to learn the guitar the other year because I thought I'd need to actually learn to do something creative and then I just <laughs> couldn't be asked. So, I don't know, it's my weakness is too much. I mean, the, the point is that you've got the university stuff in teaching. Um, but actually for me, the telly is the kind of alter ego of that. So actually, I, in many respects, I get my break from the academic through the media side. So, and other people would get it other ways, but I do think it's not that healthy, enough to say. I think, I mean, obviously I would say do it. It's been really kind to me. And, and I think the thing is that when, if you talk to people about geology, the problem is usually they think of rocks and they go stones. Why would I study stones? That's boring. And what's great is if you, especially people who do A-level, uh, geology, they kind of see that it's much more than that. So sometimes we get people that come in that maybe come through geography route that's done plate tectonics and volcanoes and they know about dinosaurs and they think that's what geology is and they get a little bit disillusioned that, oh, why am I learning suddenly all of this minerals and things? But if you've done a little bit of geology, you, you realize that it's really vast. And I guess the other thing that is great um, about geology is this idea that it's a that it's a derivative science, it steals from everywhere else, it steals from physics, biology, chemistry, geography, maths, and it uses it to understand the planet. So from that point of view, 
it's a really good science to have. Especially, you know, if you want to do physics, brilliant. If you want to do chemistry, brilliant. But if you kind of like science, but you're not really into those specific ones, geology is ideal. You do geophysics, geochemistry, geobiology. And, and actually, if you go through a normal geology degree, you'd get little bits of all of that. Plus, you know, I'm not saying you'll always come to places like this, but geologists mostly travel, you know, for work and, um, and in studies. So you do get out into the field. And then in other times you're at the computer or you're in the laboratory doing testing. So you come out with a massive range of skills. And, and most of those are, you know, you don't need them. Many people work as a geologist, but those same skills work if you're in any kind of industry. I remember there was a letter um, that I read in the a magazine and it was a banker, an investment banker, trying to work out why his best guys in his investment department were geologists. And he said the only thing he could think about was that, unlike many of the colleagues, they were the ones that, um, when you gave them some data, were quite willing to make an interpretation on it. The, the other guys would go back to get more data. And the thing is, if you're a geologist, you always know you've got an incomplete data set and you're willing to do it. And I never thought of it until that time that these are really key skills that you use. And we never, we never t tell you guys about this, really, that you're learning this whole range of other stuff that it's nothing to do with rocks. It's the way, it's the way our brains get wired. Yeah, and I never mind if you know students say to me, "No, I'm not working," or I'll meet former students and say, "Oh, I'm not being a geologist," because you think, "Well, you've got that. That never leaves you." You know, you'll be going through Snowdonia or the Lake District with your kids in thirty years, telling them all about volcanoes, and they're getting bored and say, "Oh, Dad," you know. But so it never—it's kind of a, a drug that you're always addicted to for life, anyway. Yeah, well, I was in London for 12 years and then I chucked that to get telly off the ground. And so um, to, to make that work, I had to go back to Scotland and um, couldn't afford to live in London. But the, the intention was always to go back to uni. I think in, initially I thought, well, I'll work in Scotland, but that didn't work out. And so Plymouth had a really good, and still does have a good, Mediterranean geology. And so I knew about that. And, and also it's the kind of department I started off at, call it, teaching at a, College of Higher Education, and I've always liked that about you know the, your job is to teach students. That's what you're there for. That's um, you can do research. That's all very nice and all the rest of it. But it's all about the students. And and actually, places like Plymouth and there's there's other places too have a real attention to the student experience and good teaching. And you know I know it sounds daft, but the pastoral care, looking after students, and and a lot of the bigger universities departments had moved away from that it was all about fancy research and you know it didn't really suit it so Plymouth suits me down to the down to the tea really favorite geology pun oh you mean like um geology rocks, geology rocks yeah. or <laughs> so when I started in telly they they kind of producers who'd never had geology before suddenly we, got crazy about all these things about rocks and rock off and we're going to have rock music all the way through it and all the rest of it. Um, I'm going to be really boring now, I can't think of one. You did? I mean there's so many of them. But you used to get them in Geology Society t-shirts. So many Geology t-shirts. Shift's rock. Yeah, Shift happens as well, yeah. Well we got, you know, Shift. Nice, you know, how many things can you do with that? Cleavage, yeah, it gets ruder and ruder as we go, really. <laughs> Thrust, you know. Cheers, guys. <laughs> now, we can watch, now we can watch the volcano erupt.